you like it? Uh, yeah, so the, um, the um, what's that called? The grace period is Monday morning. Oh, oh I, mean, I thought it was Friday. Yeah. It's, so that's Friday night is usually due date, and Saturday morning is the grace period, right? So yeah. I pushed it to Monday morning. So you have okay. the whole week. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, and on Monday, if I uh, forget to post a solution. By evening, just send me an email and remind me. All right, guys. So um, we last time we were talking about BM equal I over NABLA. And um, the main way we use this is to compute the stability of our hull. And today we'll do like three or four examples. And that should uh, really help you with the homework problems. By the way, homework due, due date is Friday night, but you have until Monday morning to submit. Usually Saturday morning is when you submit, but you have the whole weekend. Um, also, um, so one of the problems in the homework involves something called a free surface effect. So we'll, we'll get to that after we do the examples today. All right, so once we know BM, we can compute GM. Okay, so all right, GM, GM. So two, two equations, are the main things to keep in mind for computing the stability. First is Km is what it's uh, Kb plus Bm. This Kb guy we compute as the centroid of the volume. And BM is what we just wrote up here. This is I over NABLA. And this information we can use to get our stability. GM is um, KM minus KG. KM we just computed here, KG. If you, uh, you have to know the mass loading of the hull. All right, then, um, oh, there's a chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, here we have, um, I've, when talking about GM, I've mainly uh, mentioned roll motion. The same thing can be done for pitching motion as well. But as designers, we're not that worried about pitching stability because
when there's huge waves, do you ever worry that the ship would tip over in pitching motion? No, it's mainly, we always worry about roll motion. So GM, technically you can compute both for roll motion and for pitching motion. But for uh, design, uh, designing the hull, this roll motion is the most important one. All right, and some sources that can upset your hull. So, um, sources of upsetting forces. Okay, so um, you have uh, wind or uh, waves that basically call your cause your hull to roll. So let's say we have our hull slightly tilted, and there's cargo containers on top, and you have wind. Okay, that causes you to tilt slightly from the horizontal. Then uh, another thing might be you, um, you, you might be operating a cargo ship and you're unloading um, your containers using a crane. So what happens here is you have a crane and this crane is basically dangling a huge heavy weight over here because it's trying to put it on the ground. So, um, this is lifting weight over the side. Sometimes they have such a crane right outside SeaTac, and you'll see when they're loading, unloading, or loading something really heavy, the whole barge sort of tilts sideways. And uh, another source is if you don't um, secure your cargo, well, what can happen is your cargo container can shift. And this will also call, cause a heel. And the worst case is if you hit, if you ground your ship, okay. So if you hit like a mound, there's an extra reaction force here that causes you to um, this is a reaction force, this is your weight and your buoyancy here. Okay, and we'll look at all of these, well, um, mostly shifting weights, lifting weights and grounding. So this is grounding. What about if the ship is broadside to some waves? So that, uh, I guess we can just extend this way, wind and waves. Basically any sideways force from uh, wind or waves. Um, uh, but uh, see with the waves, what happens is the wave passes by and then it's a dynamic motion. With, if there's a constant wind, it'll cause you to heal um with with a noticeable at a noticeable angle same thing here when you're lifting the weight un, until the weight touches the ground you have this angle uh, of roll or heel rather okay 
and, and we'll, we'll learn how to deal with all of them. So let's do our first example. We have a barge. Constant rectangular cross section. Whenever you see a constant rectangular cross section, that makes life easy because we don't have to deal with any hull fineness. So, uh, uh, Multiplication and addition is mostly what we will need, not, not uh, integration. So it's main dimensions. Our length is 40 meters. Beam nine, draft three. And we're told that the kg is four meters. Kg, uh, usually when you load your ship, you will know, uh, you'll have a very good idea of where kg would be. Um, how, how do you compute this? Basically, same thing as combining two different objects and finding the combined center of mass. You're doing the same thing. On the hull, you have a center mass, you add a container, has another center of mass, you can find the combined center of mass. All right, and we're also given rho seawater is one zero two five kg per meter cube. Many places you see it's expressed in ton. One ton is just 1,000 kilograms. Okay, so all that information is given and the question is what is the initial stability? Anytime somebody asks you what is the initial stability, they're asking for the GM uh, length. All right. So let's draw a sketch to set up the problem. Constant rectangular cross section, so fine. Let's just draw a rectangle. And let's start marking the important points on here. So let's see, what are we given? We're given draft is, okay, first length is 40 meter. We're looking at a cross section, so length would be out of the paper or into the paper. Beam is nine meters, so this is nine meters. T is three meters, so this is three meters. KG is four meters, so let's mark our keel here. K, G is four, G is four, okay, so G is here. K to G is four meter, okay. All right. So without doing any mathematics, can you tell me where the center of buoyancy for this guy is? So it's along that center line. All right, it's along the center line. And can, can you give me the exact value of KB? 
1.5 meters. Okay, and why do you say 1.5? Uh, it's the center of the submerged volume. Yeah, so see, um, this, um, this is a perfectly uh, rectangular cross section and we know it's submerged up to three meters. So center of the submerged volume has to lie exactly halfway. If this were a, a normal hull shape, that, that's not true. It would not be at halfway. Then we have to do integration and you've done all of that in um, your homework problems. Uh, okay, so let's mark our B. This is 1.5 meters, exactly. All right, and um, was there a question? All right, the, um, whenever we're doing these calculations, we have to compute a few things over and over, okay, B, we have to compute what the nabla is. We have to compute what the delta is. So what is nabla? Is what? Yeah, so the submerged volume for our rectangular cross section is just area times the total length out of the plane. So is this uh, B times L times T. Three times nine times 40, that's it. Meter cubed. All right, so that's a submerged volume. What is the displacement? Yeah, so nabla times rho times row of the seawater times G. So it's the weight and vol, um, displaced water volume is nabla. Displaced mass of water is nabla times rho. So weight is mass times G. All right, so this is um, whatever nabla you get from there, three times nine times 40, times 10, 25, kg per meter cubed, and this is meter cubed, times 9.81 meter per second square. Okay, and this is whatever number you get, Newton. Okay, so the question was, what is the initial stability? So basically, what is the location of this meta, cent meta center. So what is GM? Again, let's use our two main equations. So KM is ah, ah, fine. KM is equal to KG plus GM. And look, we already know KG. KG is given to be four meters, so. Mm, four meters plus GM. Okay, so GM is KM minus four. This guy is unknown right now. And um, to find this, basically, and use KM yeah see we we know KB BM we know how to compute so let's see plug in KB what is KB it's uh, 1.5 plus BM and to compute this guy BM is I over NABLA. All right. NABLA we just computed on top here. So we have that number. I is missing right now. We'll let, let's compute that. 
So remember, what I are we talking about? Looking at this image, what is the I we need to use? Let me mark this as the Y axis. This is the Z axis and out of plane is the X axis. Okay, so you say I Z is so rotating the hull about this axis? Yes. Mm. Yeah, you want about the X axis, rotation about the X axis. Okay, so we care about I X. And remember, we always, um, all of this is done at the waterline. So if we draw an image of the waterline, a top view, so top view of the water plane. What will the top view look like? It'll be a, correct, it'll be a rectangle that's nine beam and 40 long. So top view is basically this. We have nine here, 40 here. And this is our axis of rotation that we care about. All right, so IX will be what? For rectangles, what do we say? The moment of area moment of inertia is you remember this BH cubed over twelve. So yeah, that's, that's one of the simplest things we can get. Of course, if this is a weird looking hull, you know how to compute that. You have done that using Simpson's rule, using trapezoidal rule. But since this is a nice and easy shape, we already know the formula. Okay, there's a reason why I wrote B and H in quotes. Um, so remember that The base is defined such that it is parallel to the axis. Okay, what that means is if uh, our, if we are Looking at a shape like so, and our axis of rotation is here, we call this our base. But if we have the same shape and we say, no, no, we want to rotate it about that axis, then we call this our base. Okay, so just keep that in mind anytime you do computations. Is that okay? It makes sense? All right, perfect. So, um, all right, so let's see. In our case, what is IX? IX is base is beam. Oh, no, no. <laughs> see, I made the mistake. Base is what? Base is L, right? Base is L and B cubed over 12. We have the numbers, L is 40, B is nine. All right, and we use this to compute BM is I over nabla, LB cube over 12 divided by LBT.
And when you compute this, you will get this is uh, 2.25 meters. B is the beam, yes, capital B is beam. All right, BM is 2.25 and when we go back, see that's the only thing that's missing here. BM is 2.25, plug it in, get KM. KM is known, so KM minus four gives us the GM. That's what we wanted. So when you do all of that, you get GM is 1.5 plus 2.25 minus four, you get negative 0 0.25 meters. So oh, are you happy with this answer or not? What is the problem? You as a naval architect, what, what problem do you see? Why is it negative? All right, it is negative and that causes a problem, which is? Yeah, remember we talked about GM should be positive for stable hulls. At this moment, the hull is unstable, meaning if uh, let's imagine a baby comes and stands next to the hull and gives it a little kick, the hull will overturn, all right? So that G is above M? Uh, G is above M? Um, yeah, yeah, GM negative means this M would be below um, G. And you never want to end up in a situation like that. All right, so you've identified a problem and next job as naval architects is, how do you fix this problem? What can you do? So intuitively think about it. Something is very unstable. What what is your uh, what what do you feel like doing immediately? Make it wider. Yes, yes, make, yeah. Make, make it, it wider or reduce the draft. Uh, reduce the draft. Um, so reducing draft would not help. Mm, okay. So make it wider is one thing. If you make it wider. Intuitively, you feel like it's more stable. And mathematically, that happens because of this. You're basically increasing nine meters and see it's B cubed. So in, you increase it a little bit and the impact is huge. Okay, so that's one solution. But the, hull, uh, the barge already exists and you can't change the design. What is something else you can do? So you mentioned, Reduce the draft, um, but that would mean you have to unload the barge because you basically have to reduce the weight of the barge. What, what did you say? Add less weight, okay. Um, I, uh, your um, customer requires you to carry the same amount of weight. What would you tell them? Think about the KG value. Right, then think about a canoe, you standing versus sitting down. Move weight lower in the hole. Yeah, so you want to move this G lower down. Okay, so anything that can be moved from um, the top deck down into the hold should be uh, moved. So, um, unstable hull. And how do we fix it? There's two options. One is um, make the hull wider. And this is not always practical. Or um, 
rearrange your weight. All right, and um, let's continue this exact example to uh, with a weight re uh, well with a weight um, uh, addition to the hull to see what happens. So. If a mass of 1,000 ton is placed Okay, so the next part is you place a mass of 1000 ton onto the barge, but you do it such that kg is unchanged. It remains the four meter value that we originally had. Um, so that's not exactly uh, rearranging the way to move G lower. We left G unchanged. And the question says, is the barge stable now? So intuitively, we don't know yet. Uh, let's let's see what the mathematics says. Um, before we start crunching numbers, what will happen to the barge once you place this extra weight? What will happen? Do you have to increase? The, yeah, the water line will uh, move up. The draft will increase because you've placed extra weight. All right. And we can compute exactly what this new draft is. We know the original weight, you know, the extra weight you added. So we can compute the new, new draft. Okay, so let's again draw a sketch. A G remains the same. We have a new water line, which we don't know where it's at right now. So let's mark this an unknown C. What about B? What do you say this would be? Yeah, this is exactly T over two. Again, only if we have a rectangular cross section, otherwise we have to do integration. And the unknown again is meta center. Okay, so we placed uh, 1000 ton, so um, come on. all right. So uh, we said the total displacement is delta original plus delta added. Delta original is the same number we had on the previous page here. Okay. Delta added is, what, what is delta added? Uh, 
It'll be the 1,000 uh, times acceleration, 9.8. So it's not the volume, right? It's not nabla, it's delta. So this is the weight of the additional mass. This is mass, this is not weight. So we have uh, 1,000 ton is 1,000 kilogram times 9.81 meter per second squared. Okay. So everybody okay, why it's 1,000 times 1,000? 1, 1 ton is 1,000 kilograms. And so that's why. Okay. If you know this delta nu, you can um, compute nabla nu. How? Yeah, that's it. So you know the total weight you need to support and you can figure out how much volume you need to displace. All right. And remember again, this is a rectangular cross section. So we just have uh, nabla nu is equal to unknown value of T times beam. We already know nine and length is already known. This, let's call this T nu. T nu. All right, so this gives you the value for T nu. It's uh, whatever value you get here, nabla nu divided by nine times 40. Okay, if you know T nu, you know KB nu is KB nu is T nu over two. And when you put in, plug in the numbers, this comes out to be 5.71 meter. This is 5.71 divided by two, 2.855 meter. Okay. And, um, so oh, again, remember we're after stability. So GM is what it's KM minus uh, KG. We were told this is unchanged. This is remains at four meters. Okay. And this guy is what we don't know at the moment. So KM is um, KB plus BM. KB we just found 2.855. Will BM change? Yes, it will change because it what? Uh, yeah. Is because the center of buoyancy changed? Uh, true, yeah. So you've shifted B, uh, but uh, remember, uh, BM we know is I over NABLA. Okay. Yeah, NABLA changes, I does not change. So this remains the same as the original value because cross section is uh, rectangular and this has changed. And we computed how, how much it was. It's NABLA new. So this is Nebula new. All right. So this uh, KM comes out to be 2.855 plus 1.182. Okay, whatever. So gives us GM is 
um, 2.855 plus 1.182 minus 4. 0 0.037. Okay, are, are you happy uh, as an engineer? Are you happy now? Yeah, you're barely happy, you know, you're like, okay, fine. You won't tip over immediately, but it won't take much to tip you over. So um, this is stable, but barely so. All right. So is that okay? And that's like a basic, um, basic computations of figuring out whether the hull is stable or not. And remember, we use rectangular cross sections here, so no integration required. If the cross sections are not perfect rectangles, you know how to do it. Uh, you know how to compute uh, nabla, you know how to compute I, you know how to compute center of volume. So everything we've learned, you can use. Any questions? Okay. So um, let's talk about list angle and other stuff now. So, um, list ballast free surface. And density effects. All right, and we'll look at several individual cases. Okay, wait, there's another chat. Uh, could you provide a view of G or KG and the stability of a twin hull? Okay. Um, so there's a chat question. Uh, how do you compute KG? Um, all right, so when we do um, weight loading, unloading, you'll, uh, you'll see how we compute kg in, in one second. Uh, stability of a twin hull. In, would you be able to do a twin hull at a matter? Look at this. When you talk about stability, you're asking me what is GM. Were you able to compute this for a catamaran? was the only thing that's affected. So yeah, I, you have to use parallel axis theorem. That's the only thing that's affected. Everything else is more or less the same. Okay, so there's nothing um, specially different about catamarans. You just have to compute the I. Okay, uh, no? Okay, I don't want to send comment, all right. All right, okay, so. Um, okay, so let's uh, see what happens when we have weight addition. Or removal. But along the center line. Intuitively, if you add something, uh, add or subtract weight along the center line, will the hull tilt or not? I 
think about you jumping on a boat and you jump on right along the mid plane. You, you don't expect any angle change to the boat. It'll, of course, the volume, uh, submerged volume will change. Uh, but if you jump on right at the edge, you do expect some heel. Okay. So in this first case, we won't get any uh, heel angle. So let's draw the sketch. Um, We have K here. We have the initial center of gravity location here. And we add a weight whose center of gravity is little g. And its weight is w. OK. And when we do this, the new center of gravity, what happens? Does it move upward or downward when we add this red block, a container? Will my G1 be above G0 or below G0? It'll be above, yeah. Because you've added something here, so you shift the combined center of gravity above. And our job is to find what this kg1 is. So the question is, um, what is the shift? In the center of gravity? G0, G1. Okay, and we're told that we know um, KG0 and K little g are known beforehand. A little g is, um, if it's a perfectly rectangular huge container, you know, center of gravity will be halfway of that little, uh, well, halfway of the height of the container. So, you know, K, K to G. If you know K G and K little G, which means K G zero, uh, no, sorry. G zero G also known. And G0, G1 is basically KG1 minus KG0. This is known. This guy we need to find. Okay, so. Remember what happens when we combine, glue together two different objects? What happens to the combined center of mass? How do you compute it? Mm -hmm. You take the mass of each one and? and do you remember how we do it for the area centroid? A1 times uh, X1 plus A2 times X2, right? We do the same here. Mass one times X1 plus mass two times X2, okay? So um, 
just doing that gives us kg1 is okay mass one times center of gravity one so initial let's say kg0 is the initial times mass initial is what delta zero over g it's m1 times r x, uh, z1 we're talking about the z direction all right you tell me what comes next so that's mass mass initial times center of gravity initial plus what Does the first term make sense? Why we put kg zero times this? This is initial mass. So mass of the hull, forget about the box. Mass of the hull times center of gravity of the hull. Plus what? K little g, right? Yeah, so times. It's the uh, mass, mass one plus mass two. Make sense? Okay. So I just added one container. You add a hundred containers, doesn't matter. You do the same thing. You'll have a hundred terms on top, hundred terms on the bottom. You subtract a hundred containers. You do the same thing with a negative sign. Okay. So that's that's how you compute your change in the center of gravity. Okay, so when you simplify this, uh, it becomes uh, kg zero delta zero plus k little g times w. Okay, and then um, I've just expanded this k little g into these two terms. Okay. Then this gives you And this is equal to G um, zero G one. That's what we wanted. What's the shift in the center of gravity? Both meaning what's the length of G zero G one? So it comes out to be that. Uh, so if you understand this first part, everything else is just algebra and moving things around. Okay. Um, okay, so wait. All right, so uh, <clears throat> is this okay? Sorry. So if I give you three different mass loadings, you'll be able to compute the change in center of gravity. And if I shift this to the right or the left, we'll be able to compute leftward or rightward shift as well. Okay, same as we do for the Z direction, you can do the same thing in the Y direction. Okay, and we'll do that uh, to figure out list. Um, 
Uh, there's uh, another question in the chat uh, about twin hulls. Um, for twin hulls, where is K, B, M, and B? Okay, so let me see. All right, let's just take a catamaran. Can you just so, show the last part of the? Preview? Oh yeah, uh, I'll I'll bring this back. Just just let me quickly answer the uh, twin hull question. So, um, catamaran, where is the center line? In the middle of water. Right here. Okay. And you can say this is the key line. Okay. Where will um, the where will uh, center of gravity and center of buoyancy be? Yeah, and G and B will be along this line. Okay. And remember, it's um, uh, you would have uh, like a B1 here and B2 here, but when you combine the two, you'll end up being right at the center because one has a negative. Z uh, Y location and the other one as a positive. Okay. So same thing, uh, you get um, B combined is equal to B1 times um, Y B1 plus B2 times Y B2 over, um, no, not B1, sorry, B left, sorry. Um, what is uh, nabla, nabla, nabla one, nabla two, over nabla one plus nabla two, right? That's how we find the um, center of buoyancy. So you do the same with this. Okay. All right, so let me, uh, yeah, so um, most of the things lie along the center line. Okay, let me bring this back. And how did we rewrite KG? KG, KG, KG. This guy, how did we rewrite this? Uh, in the parentheses. So where did this come from? Yeah. Um, so K2G is just this, right? If you know KG zero, and if you know G zero to little g, you, you know, you just add them up. Okay, going from K to uh, little G is yeah. K to G zero and G zero to little G. That's, that's why I wrote it. Makes sense, thank you. But isn't there like a little gap between G O and G one? Yeah, the, uh, the, the, that's the shift that we are trying to impute, G zero. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, the, um, that's the main, uh, 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 main objective. The this G zero to little g, you will already know because you know where your hull's initial G zero was, and when you know where you've placed your container, so you know this location. So you that's just the difference. That's why this is written here G zero G or also known. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Any other questions? Oh, that's it for me. All right. Okay. So, um, mm -hmm. oh, there's one more. Okay, just ask me <laughs> indirectly because I, I don't see the, what happens in the chat. Um, how do you calculate G0? Now, G0 is known for the hull before you start loading. So um, the, if it's an empty hull, the manufacturer will give you the G0. Okay. If it's an unloaded hull. All right. Uh, okay, 
So in addition to change in center of gravity, when you add extra mass, there will be a change in the center of buoyancy because you change the submersion, okay? So there's also a shift in center of buoyancy. And the reason for the shift in center of buoyancy is you've added uh, W added, which implies the nabla increases, which implies B location changes. Right, and let's again draw the sketch. Right. So initially, let's say our uh, center point C was located at B0. And initially, our water line was this guy. So this was initial line zero. And after you load it on, the water line moves up. All right, so um, you tell me how we should approach this. I need to find the new B1. How should we approach this? So what should we do? We know before putting on this block, the buoyancy center was at B0. After putting this block on, our what line has changed? Where's the new center of buoyancy? It moves, yeah, slightly up because this is an extra submerged Mm. extra volume submerged, right? So if you know how much, uh, if you know this little B location, you can use that to compute the B1 location. Okay, so KB1 is equal to what? Remember what we did for mass? We do the same thing for volume. So, correct, the initial KB0 times. Times what? The first dis submerged displacement. Yeah, so nabla zero. All right, plus yeah, K little b. Yeah, let's call this nabla uh, additional. Divide by total. Okay. Nabla zero, you know, is delta zero over rho g. What is delta nabla additional? What is the volume extra submerged? Yeah. 
wouldn't it be the difference? So difference between uh, L not and L one. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you know the geometry, you can figure out by doing integration. But without no knowing the geometry, would you be able to give me the exact value of extra submerged volume? Not at this moment. <laughs> I'd have to think. So think about what causes this extra submersion. Who is causing this? The weight added. Correct. The weight added. And can you relate this weight added to extra submersion? If I give you, I add a certain amount of weight, would you be able to tell me the exact volume of water you need to displace? Yeah, it'll be W over um, um, G. Why did I put rho here? So uh, way, did I make, make a mistake? Wait, will there be a rho or not? Mm. Yeah, okay, so, correct, correct. Otherwise you just get the mass. Mass, mass, mass is weight over G. Yeah. If, and uh, volume would be mass divided by rho. That's why volume is. Okay. Yeah, so if you know the amount of weight you add, you, you, you would be able to tell me exactly what extra volume gets submerged. Okay, so don't need to do any integration or geometric computation here. All right. So, and when we put all of this in here, you will end up with um, KB1 is KB0 times delta 0 plus K little b W Okay. Uh, of course, you have to know what the uh, little b position is. And for that, we need to do integration. Uh, if it's a um, perfect rectangular cross section, then that's easy to compute. No integration needed. All right. So um, we, we need to find the shift, right? So we need um, b0, b1 which is equal to KB1 minus KB0. Okay. And um, so to get that, we continue from here. KB1 times delta zero plus W. And again, I've expanded k little b here. Same as, uh, same concept as we did before. That's what we were after, the shift in the center of buoyancy. Can you just explain again how you're doing that expansion with KB? This one? Yeah, I hate to make you repeat it again, but. No, 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 that's, that's perfectly fine. So, um, just looking at the drawing here, look, K2 
to little b is kb0 i knew before i even started okay so i add kb0 to b0 little b that's exactly what i had. i didn't realize that's where the b little b was i'm sorry i didn't see that that was the b oh i mean <laughs> okay so you're doing okay you're just adding and then you're yeah. you're adding the kb not plus the All right. kb uh or the b what is it b not um times b no, it's not times. It's B zero B means the distance from B zero to little b. Okay. When you did it on the previous problem, you left there's like a shift. There's like a space between the two things you were adding. For this one, there's not a space. Or wait, am I? No, I was looking at it the wrong way. Never mind. My apologies. So, so the difference just gives you the or the adding is okay. The, the difference is what we wanted, this KB1 minus KB0. So I'm just mm, rewriting things, so I'll end up getting this difference. OK, I see I see it now. It's, it's a little odd, but thank you. Again, um, here um, we, you, you need, OK, so look at the right-hand side. You know initial weight of the hull. You know, the weight you've added, B0 little b is something you also need to know, okay? So um, B0 b, um, if it's a perfect rectangular hull, you, you would be able to compute very easily because you know this would be exactly half of the submerged volume and you, you'd be able to compute this distance, okay? If it's not a perfectly, a perfectly rectangular cross section, then you still know how to do that. You, you just have to integrate. I think someone asked a question in the chat about what the definition is of, uh, of list and ballast free surface. Oh, uh, okay. So we haven't done anything with ballast free surface yet. Um, list, definition of list. You know, it's the- I'm kind not of, sure what exactly they asked, but it's in the chat, but I was just letting it. Okay, list is just when you have the tilt uh, of the hull, the list angle is the angle of the roll. We call it roll when it's dynamic and list when it's just uh, sitting there uh, sadly. Okay, so well, this makes sense. Uh, so remember, it's always mass one times position one plus mass two times position two or Volume one times one plus volume two times same thing over and over. Uh, the basic thing is um, the basic concept is can be used to very um, complex computations. All right. Um, mm. I want to tell you about the heel next, but just one more thing before that. Um, okay, so let me bring back the old page here. You've loaded your hull with this extra container. Now you decide to lower this guy down straight along the center line. Would you be able to compute the change in CG, the change in center of buoyancy when this happens. Mm -hmm. K little g is moving, correct? Yes. Yeah, so as long as you know how far down this moves or how far up this moves, this is again doing the same thing, mass one times position one what about central buoyancy? How, how much would it change when I just shift this guy down? The, yeah, exactly. The central buoyancy will not change. It's the same displacement because you haven't added or subtracted any mass. So you just shifted your center of mass, not the central buoyancy. Okay. So um, let me just write that note. Mm. 
um, if we shift the weight along the center line, the CG would change. And we know how to compute it. But the central buoyancy would remain unchanged. And displacement remains the same. All right. Okay, so uh, shifting weight just up and down is along the center line doesn't really do much in terms of uh, making your hull tilt. Uh, but if we do a transverse weight shift, it will cause your um, hull to list just a little bit. All right, so let's say we have our hull again. Right. If this is the scenario that initially the, in condition zero, the container was on the left edge, uh, starboard edge, and you move it to uh, the other side of the ship, what happens? Okay. So when you do this, your um, hull will heal or list due to Uh, the moving weight. Um, to find the heel angle we need to find the shift in the CG location. Okay. 
Okay, and we're just about out of time, so we'll we'll keep going um, next class. Do you have any questions? All right. So uh, again, on homework um, problem two, you'll have to use free surface effect, which I'll teach you after this um, list and uh, list angle. Okay, if there's no questions, then I'll see you Friday. Next Wednesday exams. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, professor, when can we expect the first test or midterm or? Sorry, what was that? I did. Next Friday? You Wait, asked I'm... and I'll grade the your first quiz, right? No, 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 no. When would the when can we expect the first midterm or test? Oh, it's scheduled for next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>